Well, let's go ahead and get started. You said you sent an email? Yeah. Look at that, I can't see that we have. All right. This one here. You still there, Samina? Can you guys still hear me okay? <clears throat> How did I lose everybody? Can you hear me now? Yes. There you are. Okay, so hey, so I'm like This one right here, Samina? Yes, that's that's one. All right. Uh, it says Microsoft has identified a potential security concern as it would be unsafe. Uh, do you wish to continue? Yes. And it won't let me continue. Do you have the solicitation open right now? If you have it open in FBO, Whenever you want to work on something uh, and you've got to open an FBO, just copy the address bar up here and email me that. Uh, actually, uh, John, every day this time I uh, drive to home to pick up my kids. So ah, every day I gotcha. in your uh, yeah, meeting uh, during my driving. So oh, please, uh, this is a source out from USDA on food and nutrition. Please, if you can search. All right, let me search that way. So. Okay, what agency was it for? USDA uh, Food and Nutrition Program. Food and Nutrition Service? Yes. Okay, what was the key words on it? Uh, it was, uh, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> um, this was, like, this was a that, that, that's, uh, I can say, like, source out food and nutrition program, and uh, they were looking for small businesses, if they can send their capability statement, such kind of. So it was just under food and nutrition, or subsistence? Yes. yes. Okay, that brought up 54 opportunities. Um, supplemental nutrition program, the SNAP program, school nutrition and meal cost study. Uh, yeah, meal co uh, cost study, too. Uh, by the way, uh, the first one, April 15, it was due. Uh, that one was also, uh, this was also a source of, by the way. 
and the first one research and evalu evaluation actually yeah this one the research and evaluation one evaluation of the direct certification Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's right. Okay, we can look at this because most sources sought are the same. A sources sought means they're looking for sources. They're not putting it out for bid yet, so the synopsis is going to say that. It's going to say blah, 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 small business, valuation, government pay. Um, they're not going to pay you to respond to the sources sought. Um, they want you to design, implement, analyze, report, uh, objectives, blah, blah, blah. There's not a request for a proposal. No solicitation exists at this time. They need somebody who's got set-asides, who's a small business, who's registered in SAM uh, for the small business set-aside for that NAX code. <clears throat> so what we're looking for is, if this is something we can do, what we're looking for is what they want us to submit, submission requirements. It just refers mm -hmm. to the smart survey must provide a capability statement, demonstrate the experience, skill, and capability of fulfilling government requirements to the above accordance of federal acquisition, far related to the statement should be sufficient enough detail that government can determine the expenditure of the firm to provide a promise to the government and take them blah, 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 blah. So all they want you to do is email a cap statement. Specify one or more alternative point of contacts within your firm, including phone number, telephone, and email address. If you have a GSA schedule, they want to know what GSA schedule you're on. <coughs> Identify that you're a small business under that NAX term. They want to know uh, relevant experience. So up to five up jobs that you've done that are relative in experience to this contract. And they want to know for each of those, the contact name, agency or department, total value, period of performance, description of work. Statement should be less than 15 pages formatted, one inch top margin size, bottom times the Roman font times 12. So you want to follow these rules to the T, do exactly what they're asking for. No more, no less. And then email it. This should take you all of five, ten minutes. That's who you email it to, etc. So most sources saw it. All they're asking you to do is send a cap statement, or sometimes they'll ask you to put yourself on the interested vendors list. Um, usually it's pretty something pretty simple and doesn't take much time. All right? Yeah, but John, my question is that uh, this next code is not um, I'm working under. This is research, and they want to do uh, research and analysis, and they want to know uh, what is going on in the school. But I am sure later they will, uh, you know, they will send a solicitation, and I'm sure. How did I lose all audio? John? I don't know what happened, John. I don't know what happened. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear yeah, you. Yeah, I can hear you, John. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was trying to mute because it was a lot of background noise, but I think I might have done something wrong. Uh, any sources sought, all you have to do on a source is sought is simply follow the instructions in the synopsis or if there's no instructions in the synopsis, there may be attachments. There's usually not attachments in the source of SOT because they're not ready to put it out for bid yet. You can watch it, put it on your watch list. You can add yourself to the interested vendors list if it's blind or if the purchasing agent tells you to. Uh, otherwise, all you can do is exactly what they're asking. And in this case, they want you to send a cap statement and a few additional documents. That's it. Same thing with an RFI, request for information. And sometimes on a pre-solicitation, same thing. Any other questions? John? Yes. Yes, this is Trent from uh, GCI. Um, real quick, we got to go a green light on the contract that we wanted you to tell us if you can do the bid on, or write the bid proposal for us. Yes. Did you, um, is that a yes? 
Um, I got the information from you. I was waiting to hear back from you guys. Is that something you definitely wanted to do? Now that I got the confirmation, I can do the report. It'll take a day or two to run the report, but that's not due, that's not due for another month, right? No. Uh, two weeks. This one is due, two is weeks. due March 20, uh, is due April 28th. Should I resend it to you? I can email it real quick. No, I, st I still have the email. Uh, after the, yes. after I get off the training, I'll get on it today, and I should be able to have an answer for you tomorrow. Okay. And then um, I, I have um, um, some questions that um, the radiologist that's going to be working with us wanted me to ask. But the other, I emailed them to you. But can you answer just the um, the conflict of interest question that he had? What email did you send it from? Uh, I sent it. It should have been from um, Trent Dot Stevens at at um, GC. Uh, at, um, no, it's not that one. At GreerConsultingInc.com. I sent you the list of the questions earlier. Yep, that's it. Okay. So just the conflict of interest ones is, is of importance for now, and then I can get offline with you for the rest. And actually, I was going to try to set up a call with me, you, Jason, and, and the uh, radiology who's representing us. Okay. Um, if he works for the VA right now, he's a VA employee. Okay. Right now. Right. They are allowed to do other other work outside. That's not a, that's not a problem. Um, and okay. and he could conceivably do work for the VA that he works for, but as long as he doesn't do work for the VA that he works for, that's one less thing you have to worry about. I got you. Well, his his concern in relation to this solicitation is there a conflict working with the uh, uh, Indian Health Services being a VA employee? No, that shouldn't be a problem at all. The only time there's a real conflict of interest is if if he's actually working for his own agency. Uh, okay. And when that's the case, then uh, you would have to prove that there's no there's no funny business. He's not. Uh, he didn't. You guys didn't win the contract because he knows the purchasing agent, and they did it right. a favor. And then he gave the purchasing agent money. He gave him a kickback. That's I got when, you. that's got when you. you get in trouble. Um, <clears throat> if, the, if the purchasing agent just did it as a favor because they know each other, that's that's a very gray area. But because if he did him a favor, then what does he owe him now? You know. That's why you're better right. off. Anytime right. you're, you've got a situation like that, you're better off not having that employee do anything government-related with his own agency. And when, the, and when that's the case, you've got no conflict of interest. Okay. Okay. And then uh, one last question from, from me is the, the, the radiology group that we're going to work with, they are not SAM registered, I believe. I'll double-check, but I don't think they're SAM registered. If the contract's over six hundred and fifty thousand, and they're going to require you to sub out a certain percentage of it, you're going to have to show who you've paid that to. In which case, they're going to have to have a cage code. If the contract's under okay. six hundred and fifty thousand a year, more than likely you can sub it to anyone, and they don't have to be SAM registered. Okay. okay. Now, now you sent me a note saying that we need to determine if over two point five million per year. Um, how do we determine that? No, that's you know that's the the magic bullet. That's the smoking gun. Um, okay. <clears throat> we're we're going to have to determine two things. We need to get a guesstimate as far as what the value of that contract is per year, and yeah. uh, we're going to need to know approximately how many employees are going to be working on it. Because if it's over, a, if it's over a I'll certain number of employees, there's different rules. If it's over a certain number of dollar amount, there can be different rules. Just like there's 650,000, the contract's over 650,000, you're required to sub out 23% of it, most cases. And that's a whole other area that I'm going to have to write your proposal to make sure we cover that. 
So I need to know, okay. even okay. if it's just a guesstimate, a range, it could be between one and two million or two and five million or 150,000 to 250,000. I need to know a range and just a rough number of employees that will be involved. Okay, I can get that with no problem. And, okay. and when we do the employee, are we doing the subcontractor employee number or GCI and subcontractor company? What's your question again? I'm sorry. Um, when we're trying to determine how many employees, are, are we looking at the employees for the subcontractor and GCI or just the subcontractor? Both. Both, if you can. You know, and again, it's just okay. a rough estimate. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay. Okay. Thank you, John. You got it. Hey, John. Hey, John. Yes. To that point, how do we make a determination as to you know how much how much to price these services out at as compared to what the government you know is looking for to pay I mean how do you do that you're gonna have to rely on your subcontractor to do their homework and give you a, a decent price okay you know he's uh, your radiologist is the specialist in what they're looking to hire and they've got a guesstimate as far as how many uh, I think it was like 5,000 uh, MRIs have to be viewed a year, 2,300 uh, seed caps have to be reviewed a year. So, I mean, you're just going to have to give that information to him and say, okay, what's your best guesstimate as far as how many employees you're going to need uh, and how much this is going to cost? Gotcha. You know, and then you got to add your profit on top of that. Gotcha. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody a bid solicitation proposal to work on? Yeah, I do have something, John. This is John Walker at 303 Software. Okay. Um, just a question, a really general one, similar to the one I had last week. My question today is around uh, RFIs. Uh, our CEO just wanted me to, to ask you just a general question on that when they are, are putting out an RFI beyond the capability statement. Um, do you have any light you could shed on what we could provide to them? Usually the RFI is just like a source of SOT. They're going to give you instructions on what they want you to give them, and you do exactly what they ask. Okay, it's pretty much the same as an RFP then, in a way. An RFI, a source of SOT, pre-solicitation, um, they're all kind of the same. And, and in the grand scheme of things, depending on the purchasing agent, they may think the source of SOT is one thing, and an RFI is another. And then another purchasing agent thinks just the opposite. Okay. You know, keep in mind, so like... So would it be helpful to get in contact with whatever sourcing agent and clarify what their thoughts are on it versus RFI versus nope. sources of thought? No, you don't want to bother these guys. Fill it out. You have to. Okay. Just follow the instructions. I mean, it's right here in this synopsis. It's very, it's plain as day that what they want. <clears throat> right here under submission requirements. This is exactly what they want, and they want it exactly the way they want it. They want 12-point okay. new, new Roman font, give them 12-point new Roman font. They want one-inch margins, give them one-inch margins. Do exactly what they ask for, no more, no less. Because this, this, the biggest reason why people lose contracts because they're not registered properly to begin with. They have discrepancies in their filings. The second reason, biggest, uh, second biggest reason, reason people lose contracts is because they don't follow the instructions. Mm -hmm. The third biggest really? reason is because so, they, they make a typo or a spelling error or a grammatical error or a mathematical error, and the purchasing agent's looking for a reason to throw it out. And the fourth reason is because they turn them in handwritten, even though I tell people not to uh, all the time. You know, I make that joke. If you're going to handwrite it, do it with pink crayon with sparkles because that's about what it's worth. But people still turn them in handwritten, and they still lose contracts because they're handwritten. That's amazing. Well, yeah. I wouldn't plan to do any of those things. So you said nothing, nothing, uh, no more, no less. So no more as an additional exactly. capability statement or nope. like a, a nope. letter to a company. Nope. That's all bad. Exactly what they okay. ask for. That's it. They say less than 15 pages. Don't give them 15 and a half. Don't do 15 pages double-sided. 15 pages. That's okay. it. it doesn't have to be 15 because it's no, uh, shall be 15 pages or less. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, following the instructions, guys, is, is one of the biggest uh, areas <laughs> outside of, of not being registered properly. Following instructions is the second biggest reason people lose contracts. Is there, is there a way to 
tell if you're not registered properly or is there something you should be registered for that you're not? If you're if you used us, if we registered you, uh, you're registered properly because we you know we've done eighty thousand same registrations. We go through and we make sure that you're done you're you're done right. Uh, if you're not signed up with me, if you're not a client, let me know. I can go through and look at your filings and tell you if you're compliant or not. Did you? Um, I'm not a client. Um, I use U.S. federal contracts to set my account up and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you could look that up for me, that'd be great. Yeah, drop me an email. We'll we'll do it after the training. Okay. Anybody else got a bid, solicitation, proposal, question? Um, also, hey, guys. Um, were you able to um, – I know I sent in capability statements. Would it be better to ask about that after the um, – the class as well yeah yeah ask about it after class we'll figure it out all right great. hi John yes I sent you a um, an email regarding one that I was interested in submitting I had a couple questions got a couple of questions yeah all right and you what email did you send it from um do you want me to send it again to you? I just, no, I can, um, I can pull it up. I just uh, I, I don't know based on voices because I don't see people's faces. I'm not sure when someone asks me something exactly who I'm talking to. So I just asked what email to send it from so I can pull it up. Uh, from Erlene for Elliot. I R L E N E. E A R L I N E. Yeah, whenever you guys have a question or something, just say, I have a question, it's from email, and then rattle it off, and I can pull it up real quick. No big deal. Okay, so this is the one you want to look at? Yeah. Excellent. She cut and pasted the link, like I asked, so all I have to do is click on it. It takes me right in there. That saves us time. And what is and your question? If you'll, just, if you'll just go to the section that... Um, under solicitation and buy attachment and the second paragraph there it says that the San Diego intends to conduct an online competitive reverse auction. Yep. Could you tell me exactly what they're saying there? Yes, they're saying they're going to run this through FedBid. FedBid Inc. is a private for-profit company like um, eBay but it goes backwards. So you're going to log in you're going to create an account and log in. You're going to upload whatever documentation they require, which is not real difficult because you have to, you know, it'll tell you to upload this document and then do this next and do that. It's kind of idiot proof. Once you upload all the documents, you're going to say, I want to submit a bid. And you're going to put in a price, and they're going to tell you if that price is acceptable. If it's acceptable, then that means you have the lowest price. You're currently the, the winning bidder. If someone comes in and bids lower than you, that they'll do it for a cheaper price, then you are no longer the lowest bidder and you are not the, uh, you're not going to win. You can set it up so that if someone beats your bid, you can drop your bid by increments of $10 or $50 or $100 until you reach a certain amount where you're not willing to go any lower than that amount. In which case, if someone goes below that amount, then you're kicked out and you're no longer eligible for the, for the uh, to win it. As long as no one underbids you, you win the contract. So Fed Connect and, and Fed uh, bids kind of neat because you know as soon as you submit your bid if you're going to win it or not. But if there's two days left on it, somebody else could come back in and underbid you and take it away. Okay, and it'll tell you how much time that. Yes, um, it'll tell you everything. The bidding window. Yep. Okay. How much time is left when the last bid is due. And some people won't bid on it until the last minute, and they'll try and get in and, and get into a bid war. And sometimes they don't. I mean, I got <laughs> I got a client that sells sand, and, and literally, when when someone tells you to go kick sand, that's what he does for a living. <laughs> he sells, uh, you know, he sells sandbags and sand. So during uh, hurricane season or rainy season, he's got this big property, and people show up and they buy sandbags from him. Well, when there's no storms or anything, then he sells sand in bulk to concrete companies to mix, you know, concrete and and, and for other purposes. Um, apparently, he's, uh, he was asking me one day about how to, you know, diversify. And I said, well, why don't you run an ad in your local paper uh, to sell sand to residential so people can build sandboxes? 
and let your let their kids play in the sand. He's well, it's genius, you know. Thank you. I I, yeah. I, I do sometimes. I'm I'm doing a pinch, but uh, long story short, a lot of the bids he bids on are through FedBid or FedConnect because it's a commodity. It's sand. It's not like you're going to have, you know. If, if it's a razor blade, there's different types of razors. This one has eight blades and six gliders, and this one has the non-slip handle. you got all these different alternatives when it comes to widgets. But when it comes to certain commodities, it's just sand. So they're going to do that through FedBid because everybody sells pretty much the same sand, you know. Okay. So then would you suggest that you start with a bidding strategy, don't actually list your final price, but start with a, a price that you can sort of move accordingly? Well, in this case, they're looking for the lowest bidder, so start high. Absolutely okay. start high. And if your bid's not accepted, then that means you've got you to sharpen your pencil. So drop your, okay. drop your price a little bit. That doesn't work, drop it again. But don't drop it to where you're not making any money. Okay. All right? Okay. Great, thank you. You want to drop your pice. You don't want to drop your pants. <laughs> okay, thanks. No problem. Any other questions? Anybody else got a bid? Um, proposal question? I, I do have a. I have a question. I didn't send an email. I just got the actual um, notification for the meeting. But I did have a question. Okay. That someone kind of touched on when it came to pricing the um, the bids. And I heard you say that was a subcontract subcontractor scenario. But what if you are the the one bidding for that? Do you price according to retail cost, or how do you price a bid? Well, um, in, the right, in the right range, so you won't overbid or underbid. If you want, I mean, I, I'm going to cover that right now. But if you want to go into that in a little more detail, go to YouTube and search uh -huh. how much should I charge? Okay. It may just come up under. No, you're gonna have to add my name in. There's too many people with videos saying how much should I okay. charge. Eight point four million. <clears throat> there it is. How much should I charge for government contract? Um, that one. And this one's mine also. I get this question often, how much we charge. Those two are good. But here's the deal, all right? You're not doing this as a hobby. You want to make money. Right. When I, I brokered contracts in the late 80s and early 90s, and we were lucky if we got 3 to 5% markup. We were brokering hard drives and, and memory, RAM, and, and stuff like that, which was, you know, major commodities back then. And, uh, and the price margins were tight. And we had sometimes 15, 20 other people bidding. Uh, so we were happy if there was only 10 bidders and we were getting 5%. You guys are in a system where on the average there's only three bidders and the average markup is 20%. So when I, you know, when I get people saying, well, I submitted five bids. I haven't won any yet. You need to get off your lazy horse and start submitting bids because five bids is nothing. Right. We, used to admit, we used to submit five a day, 10 a day, 15 a day just to win one of them. And, but when we did, well, we made some nice money off of them. So, uh, you know, my answer to that, my, I teach my clients to charge between 15 to 20%. I've seen contracts as high as 100% markup. I've seen contracts as high as 2 or 3% markup. But there's no sense doing it unless you're going to make decent money at it. Thanks. Yep, because once you win a few contracts and do a good job and get good scores, they'll trust you more and you'll get more contracts. It'll snowball. long as you don't eat the yellow snow, you'll be fine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. I have a question. Yes. When, um, I don't know if it's the best question or not, but when getting a bid together, what information would I initially need to get together? Um, what you're looking for on a proposal is what's called instructions to offer. Uh, I can go through one with you real quick, but if you really want to become a pro at instructions to offer, go to YouTube and search instructions to offer. Offer is not a real word. The government made it up.
um, offerers, sorry, stretches to offerers. There's only, I know there's more videos than that. What's going on? Oh, I didn't spell it right. Ensure instructions, instructions to offerers. There it is. Is it only showing 21 videos? There we go. Instructions to offerer brings up the most results. And most of these videos are mine, and they're actual videos where I was working on an actual proposal or solicitation with a client. And instead of uploading the video that day to, you know, blah, 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 I just uploaded constructions to offer because that's mostly what we covered. Proposal writing 101, same thing. These are all videos about how to bid. Um, so I can go through it with you real quick, but if you really want to become an expert, watch the videos, and, and you'll pick up every secret I know. This, if nobody else has a bid to work on today, I'll go through one. If not, let's go through ones that people want to work on. Hey, John. Uh, John, John I want to ask you in I'll one question. question. Let's go Did ladies first. Ask? Go ahead, ladies okay. first. Yeah, uh, John, uh, this is Samina from ZDOS. Actually, yes. I want to help you. The, a person asked uh, previously this question related to the solicitation. Um, I do have one product, um, which is ZBitLink, and uh, this is ZDOS product, and um, which is from there you can search your partners and uh, you can view their capability statement, their past performance, and you can make partnership first, and then after that you can upload your solicitation and it will parse. And then you can, one by one, you can answer all of the you know, solicitation questions and whatever you want to write, you can write over there. And you can, um, you know, you can, uh, you can um, have your uh, past performance repository also, right. and um, I want to even know <coughs> about the how I can market this product, and uh, it also gives the answer uh, which a, a previously a person had, uh, you know question about that. Right. So, so, so how, how you can help me to uh, you know market the ZBiz link, which is related to these uh, you know solicitations. Best thing I can do for you, I need you to send me some information on it first because I'm going to have to take it to the powers that be here and get approval for us to you know, suggest it. Uh, and then once I get approval on it, I'll have you do a go-to meeting one day and I'll put you in charge and I'll let you present it. And then I'll record that video and I'll post it for you. Oh, sure. Wonderful. So let me, I will send it to you. Sure. Yeah. And anybody else has got a product or service, you guys want me to do a product review on it, let me know. Um, because my, my videos, even when I, when I first post them, whatever I'm doing is working and I'll post a video and it'll only have six views, but it'll go to the first page same day. So if you've got a product or service, you want me to do a product review on, let me know and we'll do it through a go to meeting. I'll record it and then I'll upload it and I'll get your product review on the first page, uh, uh under your keywords. Anything I can do to make you guys more successful, I'm all about it, all right? Any other questions? Thank you. John, Thank John you. I have a question for you. Uh, regarding the uh, solicitation we talked to you about before, this is Jason from GCI. Um, will two weeks still be enough time to for you to write the bid? My it's cutting it close. It, it, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's cutting it close. I don't like taking on uh, proposals under two weeks. Okay. That one that I did for uh, uh, GNM, GN, uh, GNN Dental, um, we only had like a week and a half to work on it, and they still want it. And, then, you know, it's a $100 million contract, but that was stressful, you know. Uh, and then... I'm, I'm spending a lot of my time during the day actually physically writing that, and that's less time that I can help my clients. And so I don't like taking them on under two weeks. So okay. uh, I'll get that I'll get that information from you guys now that we got to go on it, and I'll get a report ran on it, and I'll be able to should give you an answer tomorrow, and we'll just get right. started. We'll run All right, thank you, bud. All right. Does anybody have a bid or proposal or solicitation to work on today? Anybody got some meat and taters? I have one. Um, it's Jolene again. I sent you another email. Okay. It's a quick question, but real important one for me. Oh. 
ruggedized laptops. Yes. I'm right. trying to determine exactly what the, the information they want. I was looking for the form that you normally have to complete, but I'm not finding anything with an attachment with that form. So I was just wondering um, if See this link right here? Yes. And I went to that, and once you click on it, it's almost exactly the same information that's on the sheet on the page you just left a moment ago. It is the exact information. So basically, they just want it on your company letterhead. There's no that, that standard form that's typical with most of the other ones I've viewed. They're not <laughs> well, requesting that in this case. What I would look for, uh, instead of reinventing the wheel, I do a control F, open a search box, and I put in instructions. So there's no instructions. Put in the word offer, see if offer is in there. Put in the word submit. There we go. Offer is required to submit documentation with the offer identifying its supply chain for the product certifying only products TA compliance in the original packaging. Making an offer officer also consists of no cost cancellation of the non-compliant word options fund received delivery any products. Provider not recognize knowledge by the manufacturer's new and original products are eligible for warranties, all or ancillary services, options provided by the manufacturer the offers not authorized by the manufacturer to sell the products to the U.S. or the products to some other manner not TAA compliant. Vendors, make sure to reference the following information in the quote. Done a Bradstreet number, cage code, business size, RFQ, delivery request date, preferred method of payment. That's the ship to address. Let's see, John McCorbrace, because it's positive. Blah, 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 blah. RFQ closes the tent. Upload on the Spari Comus website. Okay. So what they want you to provide them is this information, probably just on your letterhead. It's all that they all that they need because there's no attachments. The attachments are going to be in three different places. They're either going to be here under packages, okay. which they're not. They're going to be in a green box above the general information with links, which they're not. Or they're going to be at the very bottom, right above the point of contacts. There'll be a box right above these two guys, which is where this is. So and they're not here. So what they're going to force you to do is they're going to force you to go to Sparwar. I create an account in Sparwar, and you have to upload your documents to Sparwar. Okay. Unless it has okay. specific instructions telling you to just email it, which they do sometimes. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah, this this is a simple one. They're keeping it. They're, they're going easy on you. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you. You got it. And this is, guys, this is one of the reasons why I always say don't overthink it, because a lot of times it's this simple. I've seen I've seen opportunities where the person agent just wanted you to put a a quote on an Excel spreadsheet and email it, or to send over your cap statement with a letterhead with your quote on it. I mean, very very simple. And I've seen contracts where they wanted um, a full three ring binder with an index and every page tabbed, and they want it burned onto a CD and onto a uh, zip drive, and they want. 15 copies of the CD and they want 20 copies of the printed bound manuals with uh, with your company logo and sticker on the cover. I mean, just all kinds of crazy requirements. But, you know, that's for construction of a nuclear power plant. We're talking, they're just going to buy some laptops. They just need primarily on that, they would need uh, a brochure showing it's the right model number and the specs and, and your, your details, which in which most cases you could send them your cap statement, a brochure, copy of your reps and certs, cover page, signature page, and um, and that's it because there's not even a standard form attached. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else got a question, bid, solicitation, proposal you want to work on? Hey, John, this is Jason. One more time. Last question. Yes. Oh, What, what qualifies for a total small business set-aside? I mean, 
I'm assuming we're a small business as it pertains to the government, but is there something that we have to prove? No. Small business set-asides are based on size standards of the NAX codes. So, for example, gotcha. um, I've got a size standards chart here. If it loads, there we go. All right, so for example, <coughs> you're considered a small business. If you do remediation services, you're considered a small business under the NAX code 57910. You less than 14 million in revenues last year. Got you. But if you're doing, uh, there is an exception on some remedi remediation contracts under the 562910 NAX code. You could make more than that as long as you have less than 500 employees. And that's the footnote that explains what that exception is. For materials recovery, you have to make less than $12.5 million. So you could do all of these services, but you can't do septic tank and related services anymore under that NAX code as a small business because you made $8 million last year. But you can still do this one because you did less than twelve point five. Okay. Thank you. Right. Now, the second part of your question is, you know, What's a small business? What's a partial small? What's an emerging small? What's a micro small? That's in the eyes of the beholder. Uh, purchasing agents have different opinions of what different things mean. So one purchasing agent might think total small business means that you're under that certain dollar amount, uh, while another purchasing agent thinks micro small means you're uh, a startup. Or emerging small means that you're you're you know no you're not going to be a small business for very long. But every purchasing agent has a different opinion of what stuff means because they don't have like a centralized training where they all go through the same training process. Which is the reasons why some purchasing agents call Orca the reps and certs. Some people still call it Orca. Some people call it online representation certifications applications. Some people call it FAR and DFAR provisions. Some people call it federal acquisition regulations. Some people call it FAR regulation or FAR provisions. And it's this is all the same document. It's just got eight different names for it, depending on who you're talking to. All right. All right. Thank you. And I've had purchasing agents argue with me and tell me, we only accept the Orca. We don't accept representations and certifications. It's the same document. It's the exact same. It just used to be called ORCA. Now it's not oh. called ORCA. It's called reps and certs or FAR provision, blah, blah, blah. So that's in the eye of the uh, – beauty is in the eye of the beer holder. It's up to the purchasing agent's de you know, definition of what, of what it is. And if you, if you guys run into a purchasing agent that's using a wrong definition or something like that, don't argue with them. Don't tell them they're wrong. Uh, tell me, and I'll call them up. I'll tell them they're wrong because I don't have anything at stake. I don't have a relationship to destroy. All right? Any other questions? Hey, hey John, I have a, a, a question. It's Trent. Um, yeah. Um, could you just briefly just kind of give a like a just an overview of kind of like once once they tell you at your company they can do the proposal, like what we should do to really accelerate when you normally have a two week window, like what's going to happen next? Just an idea. Um. The, you can definitely watch those instructions to offer videos, and and I go through. Uh, you know, hundreds of different opportunities, different scales, different sizes, but here, this is the order. They're going to put something out. Okay. They're going to typically put it out as a pre-solicitation or a source of SOD or an RFI. Uh, once they gather the information they need, they're, they're going to make it into a solicitation. So solicitation, you have to submit your documentation by a certain date along with your price and your reps and certs and whatever else they require. On the average, they put an opportunity out and they give you 30 days to respond. On the average, when they receive those opportunities, they have up to 30 days to choose a vendor. On the average, they're going to give you 30 days to ship or to start the job. And on the average, they're going to pay you within 30 days of invoicing. So everything's pretty much 30 days. Uh, okay. 
in inside of an opportunity inside of the instructions to offer it's going to cover the 52.212-1 which is the instructions on how they want you to submit your bid and what documentation they want you to include there's the 52.212-2 okay. which is the instructions on how they're going to evaluate those bids uh, and, okay. and choose a vendor and award it. There's 52.212-3, which is the instructions on how they want you to ship the product or start the job and, and do the job. And then there's 52.212-4, which is instructions on how you can request a uh, bid um, a debriefing if you don't win it or if there's a debriefing window. And then 52.212-4, or sometimes uh, 4 or 5, would be uh, if you're going to do a uh, bid protest, uh, the instructions on how to do a bid protest properly. And okay. those, those okay. five FAR regulations are pretty much the only ones I know because they're the only ones I ever really deal with in processing a bid. Okay. So so if you then say you can do it, is that when we supposed to start reading these these things in I mean, every page, if it's a 100-page document? Like, is there a point where you really need to read everything no no because okay. most of those pages are your in your uh, reps and certs which you've already we've already done for you reps and okay, certs is it. a legal agreement so when you sign up with you uh, you know some free program and you accept their terms and conditions you have to agree to their terms and conditions to get that program that's what your reps and certs are they're the terms and conditions but instead of you okay. having to read them and know them all, we do them for you, and we guarantee they're done properly. And and there and there okay. are things like you guarantee that you're not going to use this money to fund terrorism. Well, there, that needs to be in there. I mean, why would we give a contract to someone who's going to use the profits to fund terrorism? They could if that wasn't a clause in your reps and certs. You know, they they want to make sure okay. that the, most of the money stays here in the U.S. and 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 helps. Americans and it's just it's the rules of doing business for the government and that's 80 to 90 percent of most uh, solicitations most proposals or most government documents is the reps and certs that you don't have to read okay okay thank All you right. so much you got it John just one question regarding the reps and set from cert yes. so basically when they're asking for it you're actually downloading and then just submitting that as an attachment or are you, um, is it required with every order or they'll specifically indicate if they want it and then you submit an attachment? Almost all opportunities require you to include a copy of your reps and certs unless the purchasing agent's savvy and they know they can go to Sam and pull it up. Okay. But pretty much every opportunity has an instructions to offer, and those instructions tell you exactly what they want you to submit, how they want it submitted, what format, what order, et cetera. All right. All right. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else have any questions, bid, solicitation, proposal to work on? Anybody have any other questions? Anybody want to go fishing? Yep, bad. Let's go. Well, if there's no other questions or anything today, um, there's still nine attendees on here, but if nobody else has anything, we'll go ahead and end it for today. Hello? And, uh, yes. I do have one question. Yes. Um, how, how do you look on for if it's a, um, what's that word, subsidiary? Oh, my goodness. I think that's the word for it. Like if they're willing to put down a down payment. Simplified acquisition. There you go. Simplified acquisition. <laughs> Simplified acquisitions are, are typically prepaid, uh, but they're going to specify in the synopsis whether or not they're going to pay you up front. And they rarely put those out in FBO because they're, they're no bid contracts. They're not put out for bid and by nature. Um, the only way to get them is to be registered for them so they can find you to be uh, – to, to do a bid contract and, and do a good job and earn that person agent's trust, he can hire you for simplified acquisitions down the road because he knows you. 
to market yourself to federal purchasing agents, let them know that you're compliant for simple fit acquisitions. They can give you a small contract to test the waters, or to do a uh, you know a job for a, uh, a, a prime as a subcontractor, and do a good job and get good scores. And, and that uh, purchasing agent comes to you later and hires you for simple fit acquisitions. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. John. Oh. Hey, do you think we could look at one solicitation um, that I was looking at? Uh, yeah. There's also another one that's actually... Yeah, it's the one at the, the top, Jamonte Lynn. John, can you, uh, are you speaking? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So okay. the first thing I look so, at is when the response so, is, so we've got plenty of time to respond. How to respond. What it's set aside for, so we know we're qualified. And then we're looking for what's called the SOW or the PWS, which is right here, Performance Work Statement. So we click on that. Download it, wait for it to open. Hurry up and wait for it to open. There we go. Make it bigger so it's easier to read. So, this is SOW. Or PWS has the word work in it. It's scope of work, statement of work, performance work statement. Either way, it has the word work in it. This is the, dis the detailed description of how they want this job to be done. It's broken down into a, an index page, so you know the scope of work's there. Demolition, earthwork, concrete, sidewalks and curbs, sod, monthly status reports, services summary, uh, what the government's going to furnish, uh, what products and services they're going to furnish, general information, and then the, where it's been appended. So this is literally screenshots or Google Earth pictures, whatever. They'll have specs. They'll have times and dates, when you can take holidays, what materials are acceptable. That's all in the SOW. Once we know it's something that we want to do, uh, or at least we want to be notified who it's awarded to, maybe we want to do sub work. If we have any interest in it at all, we're going to put it on our watch list so we're notified when it's modified or changed or awarded. I don't suggest you put it on your interested vendors list uh, unless the government purchasing agent tells you to, or unless it's a blind list, because you're going to get you're going to get emails and, and you know the phone, the ambulance chaser is going to come after you if you put your name up there. And other than that, all you can do is read the SOW statement of work, performance work statement, whatever that tells it what it is that you want, and then you're looking for instructions to offerer. So we can click on this right here. Wait for it to download and open. That's only one page. That's the actual like standard form where they want you to put your price. So I don't see any instructions to offer on any of the documentation. Uh, no, it'll be on this one right here. It'll be with the standard form. So I'm going to click Control F, put in the word instructions. Scroll down until I see instructions to offer. Okay. 
constructions, uh, conditions, and notices to bidders is what they're calling it in this case. They got a site visit. That's all they're telling us under the instructions for the site visit is when and uh, you need to allow time to obtain vehicle passes. Only one site visit will be held. Uh, it's not a mandatory site visit. So we know based on the previous instructions to offer that they want us to submit that standard form, which is up top. They want us to submit the standard form. They want us to submit a schedule of pricing. There's the schedule of pricing right there. And there's been no amendments. So we don't have to submit it in knowledge of amendment. So this one's pretty simple. You are going to have to submit some type of uh, some type of technical proposal with this, explaining how you're going to do this demolition safely and effectively and, and quickly. Okay. All right. We'll do. Um... Any other questions? Well, it's almost 5 o'clock, guys, so there's no other questions. I'm going to end the call for today. Be back on here tomorrow, 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Email me early if you want to join. If you've got an opportunity that you want to work on for everyone's sake, for your sake, for my sake, copy the address when you're in the opportunity and email me that link. So when I go to look at it, I don't have to search it and wait for you to find it. I can just go in your email and click the link and go right into the opportunity. It makes it faster and easier for everybody. You guys, uh, have a wonderful day. And uh, if, if you're not subscribed to me on my, my YouTube channel, subscribe to me on my YouTube, YouTube channel so you get the latest videos. You don't have to wait for me to tell you to search. You're going to get one or two videos every day that cover something government related. All right. Thank you. Got it. All right, John. Thank you. Got it. Thanks, Duke. You got it, man. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow.